What's going on guys? We're here in Jupiter, Florida. We got the brand new Armstrong Nautical Products bracket on the back of my boat, the moment we've all been waiting for. We're gonna hop on the boat, run offshore, do some commercial king fishing, and after we're done, we're gonna go pick up Captain George Labonte. We're gonna run back in the intercoastal and do some performance testing numbers. Today, we're gonna see if this Armstrong bracket lives up to the hype. I'm Adam Malusi with Moving Weight Fishing, and this is Mission Boating. My name's Adam Alusi, and I'm a charter captain here in Jupiter, Florida, as well as a commercial fisherman, as well as a content creator with Move and Wave Fishing. So I rebuilt this 25 Parker two years ago, but even after that, I still had some issues with the boat. Some of those issues were I was squatting in the back, I was taking in water, you know, I was always standing in ankle deep water. I'm sure you've heard me say it a million times now, but when you're doing it every day, it gets frustrating. And a couple other issues with the boat, you know, and I just really needed some flotation back there. I'd heard about Armstrong brackets through a couple buddies who had had them installed in the past on their boats. And with that being said, I thought, you know what, this is the right move for me. Let's go ahead and go through the ropes and get an Armstrong bracket installed on my boat. So I finally got the boat back in my possession and it's time to take her back to her home in Jupiter, Florida and go do some commercial king fishing. A typical day for me and I'm inviting along my buddy Aiden. Let's go see how the bracket performs out there in the elements. So we started our morning with catching live bait and the bait fishing was good. Some might say you had two guys on the boat. I'd say I had about one and a half, maybe one and a quarter. Aiden did not catch many sardines at all. He, he doesn't know how to speak to the baits yet. It, it will come one day. We caught about 250 sardines and we ran out there and caught kingfish. It wasn't the best day of king fishing, but we still had plenty of fish for the market and we made do with what we could. I was really, really impressed with how the bracket performed that day. It kept me dry. I was able to walk back there and maneuver fish away from my motors when they ran into the motors, as well as that everyone on my boat stayed dry and no one was standing in ankle deep water. So beforehand with the old bracket that I had, um, you know, I already talked about, I would really be squatted. I'm not kidding when I'm telling you the boat would sit like this. We're gonna, we're gonna pull some pictures up and videos of it. And especially when I had clients in the back of the boat, when I had three, four clients in the back of the boat and we're all moving around, the boat really, really squatted heavy. And now with the flotation, it totally cancels that out. And when I have weight in the back of the boat, we're still sitting how we should be, nice and flush to the water. So another advantage I have really picked up on now that I've been running the boat for a little bit is that I'm able to maneuver back there on the bracket. You know, this bracket was not only designed for flotation back there, but it's also designed as another two foot of platform, or essentially a longer piece of your boat. I can stand back there, my rigging tubes aren't in the way at all, and neither is my hydraulic steering, but I can stand back there and maneuver fish, you know, a rod around the engines, whatever. You know how clients like to tangle things up in the boat, and it's really created a lot of space for me back there. All right, so you guys have been able to see a before and after on what my boat looked like before, and now what it looks like after the Armstrong bracket and the new paint job. And I gotta say, it adds a totally different look to the boat. It adds more value to the boat, and it just looks really pretty on the water, you know? And like I said before, it is a work boat, but she looks good out there while we're working. You know, the guys at Armstrong matched Miles' paint job that he did to the boat, and they also did a two-tone, white on top and gray on the outside, and it just looks beautiful. So the morning of, we're loading up the boat and it's dark out of course, but I got the underwater lights on and they looked awesome there while we were loading up the boat. Those are actually the brand new multicolor ocean LED lights, Armstrong and ocean LED partnered up and Armstrong added that as a icing on the cake and it just looked great that morning. So I was really impressed with how the bracket handled out there in the elements. Um, you know, it's not a controlled environment offshore. You got a little bit of choppy weather, you know, a little bit of wind, a little bit of current. There's a lot of conditions going on and it's a lot different from sea trialing the boat inside of a controlled environment, like inside the intercoastal. Now we're actually gonna come inside, pick George Labonte up from Jib Club and do some real performance testing in some controlled environments. And we're really gonna see, we're gonna put it to the test. Is this gonna be an improvement or not?
What's up, buddy? What's up, George? How you oh, doing? Man, man, I'm doing all right. At long last here, huh? Finally. I know. Good to see you, man. It's a long time coming here. Yeah, it looks good, man. Really looks good. Thank you. Looks like a whole different boat, actually. It does. I know it took a while. You got all the bugs worked out? Everything good? Oh, I've only fished about 200 days since the last time I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'd say so. All the kinks worked out and the boat's been running fantastic the past few months. And we really wanted, I really wanted to test the boat out first right. and then get it dialed in and then call you guys and sure. that's kind of where we're at now. Well, listen, I'd ask you all the stuff about how you're liking it so far, but why don't we do this? Why don't we take a ride and run around a little bit and you can show me what's going on here. Sound good? Sound good. Hop, all right, man. Hop on board here, George. Let's go. <laughs> all right, man. Listen, I know I said that I wasn't going to get into details with you yet, but the first thing I noticed is that you're not standing in ankle deep water here. So that's a plus. Has that been pretty much resolved? It has. I mean, you, you know before, because oh, you, yeah. you came on the boat with me, whether I had five clients back here, a live well on, fish on the deck, whatever it was, I was standing in ankle high water every single day, all the time. And the only way I could get rid of it was to go on plane. And now I could have as much weight back here as I can possibly take. And I'm not, not a drip of water back here. So it's, it's really a miracle. That's all I wanted. Yeah, is that the same thing offshore when it's rocking and rolling a little bit too, still no water? Same thing when it's offshore and, and even when I'm sitting still and the live well overflows, it's draining while I'm sitting still. Oh, beautiful. So, you know, the, the whole the whole boat was sitting like this before and now we're totally level and that's what we were looking for. Well, that's a win right there. Let's see how she runs, man. You ready to roll? Let's go. All right. All right, Adam, before we take off, now, one of the things I remember that you were concerned about was you had a lot of water back there when you were taking off, and the old bracket with all the mechanical parts, I mean, there were hydraulic fittings and nuts and bolts and all that stuff, and you were concerned about how much time that stuff spent out of you know, underwater. Right. And every time you took off, it was completely underwater, and you hadn't had any problems up to date, but you just got in the boat, and you were worried about that becoming an issue, so that's one of the reasons why you went to this. Have you noticed a difference? I mean, I know this boat's gonna make some water flow up behind it because it's a big, wide, flat boat, but I mean, your time taken off to plane and all that stuff, you feel like it's improved? Yeah, it has for sure. I mean, beforehand with the other bracket, it was really shooting up in the middle there and then covering everything. It was it was covering the fittings, it was covering my, steer, my steering, and everything was getting wet. And it's gonna get wet already on a boat, yeah. but I'd, avoid, I'd like to avoid it getting soaked at all costs, you know? 24 seven and, and it's really not anymore when I get on plane. There's just so much more volume back there now with that new bracket, you know? Right. It's well, more dry. importantly too, there's nothing mechanical on that bracket that is gonna get messed up exactly. if it does go underwater. So there's that too. Exactly. All right, let's, uh, All right. let's do, do a little hole shot here and see what you got. All right, dude, here's what's happening. Before you were at 4,500, you were getting 1.8 miles a gallon at 33. And right now it's 1.8 at 32.5, so essentially unchanged. I mean, there's variables with the tide and all that. Right. 4,000 before, uh, you, you were going 29, now it's 28.6, so again, it's about the same. And also 2.1, but here's where it's different. At 3,500, which is your kind of low end cruise, mm -hmm. 23 miles an hour, up from 21.2 so you picked up a couple miles an hour at 35 but more importantly you added a little bit of fuel economy 2.3 versus 2.1 now those aren't really dramatic changes here right but at that range which is probably in a real world situation the speed that you're going to be running at more in the ocean when it's a little sloppy for sure going 22 23 miles an hour you're not going to be running 40 off there no so i'd Most say of the time i'm cruising around 23 miles yeah an hour. so there i mean you're maintaining a better speed and better fuel economy at that average. So it's not really significant, but it's definitely there. So that's a plus. That's a plus there too. So I think really the biggest thing so far is just the water not being back there is huge. And for some people that, that, that seems like that should already be happening on a boat. But for me, that wasn't the case. And to have it drive back there now is, is just a bonus. Yeah, okay. I was watching when we took off on the whole shots here 
and at the point where I expected the avalanche to start welling up, water starts coming up, which it's always going to do. And I was waiting for the torrents of water, yeah. and then it just flattened right out. Right. So it's. 300% better on the whole shot back there. I mean, that's huge. It could way, way, way better. And I mean, I would be happy with just that result right there. No, no doubt, for sure. Yeah, and the whole shot's way quicker for sure. Oh yeah. Well, actually, let's look at that real quick. I mean, here's your whole shot. Before 11.4 seconds, 11.26, 10.59. That's before the new bracket. Now we just did it, and you were 8.7 and 7.7 .7 seconds to plane. Shave so that's three, way seconds. better, yeah. way better. And on top of that, I mean, you're getting out of the hole much quicker, and you're not flooding the engines, right. and your mechanical bracket is gone, and this thing here, it's just, it's a win it is. all around and back that's there, probably, for sure. You know, definitely got to do with not flooding it, is getting out of the hole quicker. Yeah. I was avoiding flooding it, so. Well, you, you're getting the lift out of that thing, being across the whole transom, too. It's definitely a marked improvement. No doubt. I agree. All right, buddy, we're back here. I'm going to give you my initial assessment here, and I want to hear what your thoughts are and on the performance and your overall satisfaction or dissatisfaction with the bracket do over here. From my standpoint, I think this thing has been a slam dunk here. I'm remembering back to before you did it, the main stuff that you wanted to get rid of, this did that and then some. As far as your flotation, the wet cockpit area back here, your whole shot with all the water, all that stuff, it's just so much better than it was before with the old scissor bracket. Now the other stuff, the fuel numbers, you know, we saw some slight improvements there, but you know, not really, really dramatic for the most part, but each one an improvement. Why don't you give me your feeling about the whole process? Because you're the one who had to pay for it, and you're the one who did it, and you've got to live with it now. Where are you at with this Armstrong conversion? Well, I mean, just running the boat for the past two months while the, while the bracket's been on the boat, I can 100% say it was worth the investment, um, and I would recommend it to anybody that's going through similar, similar problems or just wants an Armstrong bracket for the benefits because, you know, some of the, some of the things you just listed off to me are just positive benefits in every single aspect. You know, they all are positives. There was nothing that changed negatively once the bracket went on the boat. So why not put it on the boat? And I, I mean, everything's been great so far. Another thing that's great is I'm able to go back there and, and fish back there, you know, and that's an extra two feet to my boat. So instead of, really, instead of a 25, it's now a 27. Now, if you've experienced any of the issues that Adam has, as far as flotation issues, or especially the wet feet, you know, then you definitely ought to consider the possibility of a bracket like the Armstrong bracket here. The other things, the fuel economy, like I said, weren't that much more dramatic of an improvement. Definitely an improvement, but if you've got a boat that's a regular transom that you want to add a flotation bracket to, you may see a lot more dramatic improvement on the performance of the boat in that instance. Here, going from one bracket to another, we didn't see a ton of really big numbers changing mm. on the fuel, but as far as everything else is concerned, holy mackerel, what a great, great improvement for this boat, man. Big time. I appreciate you coming down, George. Thanks so much. And you bet, man. No better way to top it off than getting the George Labonte approval. <laughs> All in all, you guys, I couldn't be happier with the outcome on this project. Yes, it did take a little bit of time, and every single day off the water is a day that I can't go to work, but I don't have any regrets in taking the time off to get this project done. It was a necessity for my boat, and I didn't realize it until I had the bracket on the boat, and now that I know what that bracket can do to a boat, I would never own another one without it. Um, you know, the boat looks amazing in the water. I've said it, I've said it in the past, I'm gonna say it again. I can't believe how well everything has turned out. And it's really time to get back on the water and get back into everyday work mode. We're going fishing and that's what we got going on. So we're gonna get back to work. Mission Boating, the ultimate marine resource.